iPhone versus Android. Which is better? Whoa, hold up, just wait. Before you write something dogmatic in the comment section supporting your team, this video is not about which mobile OS is better. Let's face it, in terms of functionality, both camps have their pros and cons. The things that matter for me, and if you're watching SumSub, for you too, are privacy and security. So that's why today we're gonna to try and understand which ecosystem brings you a more secure digital jungle, iOS or Android. It's me, Bradley, and this, all right, SumSub. Let's get into it. According to a survey conducted in February 2021, 46% of participants stated that on average, they spend five to six hours on their phone on a daily basis. Oh dear, that means that for almost half of you, a quarter of your life security will be dictated by your choice of mobile platform. But how safe are these popular phone platforms anyway? Because mobile devices have grown to be so important and pervasive in people's lives, they have piqued the interest of criminal hackers looking to steal your personal information. So security and understanding it is paramount. The technology itself is always advancing, and that's why I'm not gonna compare specific Android or iOS versions, but rather the core principles and philosophy behind the brand Apple and the rest which importantly have consequences in terms of privacy and security. As you know, there are many smartphone manufacturers that choose Android as their OS of choice. The security and privacy implementations vary from Huawei, where the best of your photos will be reviewed by the Chinese Communist Party and delivered to Uncle C in an envelope, to the most secure, for instance, Graphene OS. Now in this video, I compare Google's implementation of this OS as it is on, for example, Google Pixel phones. Usually, when it comes to downloading an app, there is only one popular way to do so, through a dedicated store, for example, Google Play or the App Store. On both platforms, the submitted application will then go through an app review process to ensure that it's not malicious and also doesn't violate any of the developer policies. These regulations primarily aim to ensure that the app's content is appropriate and that it doesn't imitate other apps or individuals, that it adheres to the monetization policies and guidelines, and that it observes the main bare minimum functionality requirements. I mean, for instance, it shouldn't crash all the time and it should certainly respect the user experience. The issue is that those who examine whether apps adhere to certain criteria may not actually be aware of what the app does with personal information. The number of apps for both Android and iOS, as well as their developers, is constantly increasing. And companies have actually had to hire more reviewers in recent years as a result. We all know what happens when a company hires thousands of employees at once it's difficult to scale the learning management system, and not all employees will be trained properly as a result. The biggest difference in approach, as far as we know now, is that Apple has real people reviewing each app 100% of the time, while Google tries to automate this process as much as they can, and it creates problems for them time and time again. A study released in November of 2020 by the Norton LifeLock Research Group revealed that among 34 million apps spread across 12 million Android devices, between 10 and 24% could be described as malicious or potentially unwanted applications, depending on different classifications. Of those applications, 67% were installed from the Google Play Store. The researchers mentioned that the Play Market is the main app distribution vector responsible for 87% of all installs and 67% of all unwanted installs. This means that significant amounts of unwanted apps are able to bypass the Android security measures. Now this makes, well, the Google Play Store the main distribution vector for unwanted apps. So if you're that person that downloads tons of apps searching for the perfect one, consider deleting the few underdogs. The fewer apps you have on your phone, the better, in my opinion. The truth, she's not the one. Now in the end, users are more likely to install malware by downloading it from web pages via their device browsers or from alternative marketplaces. And this is once again a big problem with Android and its ability to sideload apps. So here I have no other choice than giving one point to Apple. And this is not because of how good their security is, but more about, well, the unpredictable wild west that the Android ecosystem seems to imitate. Everything out here that's not you wants to kill you. Mm -hmm. 
Apart from controlling the way apps appear on your phone, the biggest threat to your mobile security is apps that basically ask for too many access rights. And then they use those access rights to leak your data. While the bulletproof safe that is the App Store is mostly responsible for keeping out the kind of malware riffraff that affects a disproportionate number of Android users, iPhone owners are not immune to attacks. And what I mean here is the following. iOS users feel safe, but they're not. A horrifying fact is that no one is safe either in the planes above Dulles or in the terminal below. First and foremost, when an app gets access to, for example, all photos, not many people understand that the app can actually load all of your photos in the background, use machine learning to detect not safe for work content, and then upload it quietly to a server. And when the app does that, you won't get that neat camera access dot in the corner. Moreover, even if you block all permissions for the app, there's still a variety of data that can actually be collected and tracked, nevertheless. According to an investigation by researchers at privacy software maker Lockdown and The Washington Post, every app can track 29 very specific data points about your iPhone, including your IP address, your free storage, your current volume level, and by the way, that's to three decimal points, and even your battery level to 15 decimal points. You'd think that such data is pretty useless, right? But do you remember I told you about digital fingerprints in one of our last videos? Your iPhone's device fingerprint could have been listed for sale on that website. Now, you maybe didn't even know that your device had one of these fingerprints. Yet, yeah, it's there, up for sale on the dark web. Well, if you don't trust me, here's how Washington Post puts it. It's the kind of unique data that could be used by advertisers to identify your iPhone, possibly letting them know what other apps you use or how to target you. In other words, it's sidestepping your request to be left alone. You can't stop it. But what about Android? Well, I've got no good news for its users either. Research that was conducted by Douglas Leith from Trinity College Dublin suggests Google collects more than 20 times more data from a typical Android handset than Apple does from a typical iPhone. Even when a user has explicitly opted out of telemetry gathering, this finding still holds true. Both Android and iOS handsets share data with Google and Apple servers every 4.5 minutes on average, and there's nothing you can do about it as a user. Researchers also noted that devices on default privacy settings share information related to the IMEI, SIM serial number, phone number, hardware serial number, location, cookies, local IP address, nearby Wi-Fi MAC addresses, and even the advertising ID. And by the way, both companies disagree with the findings, noting that they only reveal what's necessary to keep phones running smoothly. Well, that's not really the first time we're hearing about selling our privacy for convenience, is it? So, a couple things. One, privacy, I think, is too small a term. I use it today because that's what people respond to, but I think it's personal security. Like, where I am is a personal security matter, or it's financial security. Amazon just introduced their new Amazon key service, which will allow their delivery people to physically into your home. So the next time your phone's battery is being drained by some unknown app running in the background, there's a good chance that it's just your phone sending these photos you forgot about to the mothership. Still, in a recent blog post, Android pledged to roll out new rules starting in December 2021 that would, by default, lock out any permissions for apps that haven't been used in a while. This feature helps protect user privacy by automatically resetting an app's runtime permissions if the app hasn't been used for a while, let's say a few months. I think that this move is very important, and especially considering the data that we're going to talk about next. So that's why I'd like to support Google in this great idea by giving them a point in this category. Well done, Google. The easiest way to secure your phone is by keeping its OS up to date. Updates help to mitigate software vulnerabilities, which are usually a security hole or weakness found in an operating system. Hackers exploit this weakness by writing code to target a specific vulnerability, which is most often packaged into malware. These exploits can infect your smartphone just by viewing a website, opening a compromised message, or playing infected media. This is exactly what happened with 300,000 Android users' bank credentials, which have been compromised through ordinary apps on the Google Play Store. Updates are great until everything goes terribly wrong. There are tons of stories which back this up. Just read the story of R More 7611. Yesterday morning, I got a notification from the Android 11 software update, and it says the update went through, got to 100% restarted, went through optimizing app X of XX, 
and they never got past the Veras and loading screen. Now, I'm not saying that sort of stuff happens a lot, but it happens much more on Android phones. So when it comes to sending updates to your Palm, Apple still has the production chain, carry network contacts, and underlying code in place to make all of that happen swiftly and without pain on the user's side. While some customers continue to bemoan iOS's infamous lack of personalization, Apple's well-policed walled garden has a guarantee that iPhone owners are virtually immune to malware without even having to think about it. Google, on the other hand, still can't fix the Android update problem. You see, each smartphone running Android uses different hardware, so when an update gets pushed to it by Google, it sometimes takes almost a year for other smartphone manufacturers to update their devices, and that's only if they plan to update them. You see, apart from the Google Pixel line, other Android phones rarely get updates for a long time. And there are several reasons why. The first thing to consider is how many different models each manufacturer offers. Every year, Apple only adds a maximum of around four iPhones to its lineup. So cumulatively, the number of iOS devices it needs to support is relatively low. This isn't the case with Android, where you have a myriad of different manufacturers, all manufacturing endless different products each year. And that all is flooding the market with new devices that all require dedicated maintenance. As a result of all of this, some firms will frequently prioritize their flagship products, while the less expensive variants will frequently be overlooked. Considering all of that, I'd like to give one point to iOS. The most important difference in terms of security and safety between iOS and Android lies in their philosophy. iOS is a closed ecosystem. Thus, when it comes to security, it's 100% in the hands of Apple. The point there is that, as far as we know, Apple doesn't make any money from ads, apart from advertising apps in the App Store. Thus, it's not that interested in collecting and sharing your data with third parties. That, however, won't stop intruders hacking your iCloud if you haven't set up two-factor authentication, for instance. Remember what happened to all of those celebrities about seven years ago? You sure that will never happen to you? Google, on the other hand, makes most of its money from ads. And this means that their business relies on the ability to target their ads as well as they possibly can. Even though Android is an open source project, Google Play services, which collect the data, are not. Also, even though Android provides weaker safety out of the box, some Android builds may actually provide an extreme level of security. So this is also something to bear in mind. So what should be the final takeaway? Well, I guess no matter what OS you're using, most of the vulnerabilities are more to do with social engineering and are inadvertence rather than software or hardware. Reports by cybersecurity firms Lookout and Verizon showed a 37% increase in enterprise mobile phishing attacks last year. And most importantly, those phishing attacks were the top cause of data breaches globally in 2020. Now, I bet the data is going to be quite similar for 2021. Please share your stories of mobile hacks that you've lived through in the comments below. I bet you've all got great stories to tell. So, my name is Bradley Peake, and I'd like to thank you personally for joining me on another glorious, glistening, gentlemanly glide above the grey-green canopies of the online jungle. And remember, there's always one way that you can be totally sure in your online safety, and that is switching this button right here. See you in the next video.